court was on Mr. Salim Ali, David Crandall, and Salif Karak. Uh, this is a paper which is now uh, under revision after the first round. So it's called World Heritage in Danger, Big Data and Remote Sensing Can Help Protect Sites in Conflict Zone. That's the aim. So uh, conflicts and environments, so conflicts may have negative uh, effects on the environment. In some cases they have, it may have positive effects on the environment, as in the DMZ, the demilitarized the, the zone between North and South Korea, which is the no man's land, for example. So the effects of conflict on the environment can be very complicated. Um, and even the uh, protected areas, which are supposed to be protected, sometimes are uh, downgraded, downsized, degazetted, de so even protected areas can be under threat. And uh, a, speci a special type of protected area are what's called the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. There are many World Heritage Sites, and many of them are uh, natural World Heritage Sites. And the IUCN has, uh, uh, has published two outlooks where they uh, go over all the world, global world heritage site, na natural world heritage sites, and check whether they are under some kinds of threat. If this is a manual procedure with uh, many experts. And, um, and then you can say that you can see 7% are in a critical situation, and for various reasons. Okay, so and they give, a, a, this is a, just a, the number of sites under, and how many sites are under uh, what kinds of threats. Okay. However, the majority of the world's heritage, uh, world uh, sites, uh, world heritage sites, are not natural. They are cultural sites. So, and they are not covered by the IUCN outlook. So, uh, our aim in this paper was also to include both natural and cultural world heritage sites, uh, all which there's more than a thousand uh, globally. So uh, our question was, how can we combine remote sensing data, social media, and big data to quantify the threats for world, UNESCO World Heritage Sites? So that's the big question. And uh, just uh, uh, examples for, uh, for previous uh, studies, just to give you an idea of the kind of data that we use. For example, night lights have been used in various studies to show that uh, cities uh, which have been destroyed because of war have been uh, darkened. So you can see the colors represent when were cities lit. Okay, you can see that in Turkey, Lebanon, and Israel, the lights were uh, there all the time, whereas in Syria, cities became darker. Uh, that's, so this is one kind of uh, data set which can be used to quantify uh, the effects of conflicts. Another data set which can be used from a paper of ours is to uh, an estimate of, of visitation. How many people come to visit sites? And for that, we can use the Flickr photos. So if there are many, Flickr photos, Flickr photographers, then you can say many people came there. And there is a good correspondence between, for example, uh, visitors, official numbers of visitors to, to protected areas, and the number of Flickr photographers. So each point here is a, is a protected area somewhere in the world. Other kinds of that's, that's we, that we, we, we used here uh, for not, so another a global database, not the UCDP, but the GTD, Global Terrorism Database. So that is another global database, which is disaggregated. So it has coordinates, time, uh, description of what happened. And another one is the GDILT uh, project, which hopefully we will have a presentation about in the fourth session by Skype from the US, if the Skype if all, all will function. And then we'll get, the, get to know about this a bit more. So, um, so we have events happening in the real world, protests, conflicts, uh, economic things. Here, we've, in this paper, we focus on damage to world heritage sites. And our proxies can be either big data like uh, uh, news items about conflicts, uh, decreasing night lights, etc. So these are our proxies to examine uh, uh, what happens to world heritage, heritage sites. And uh, UNESCO has a special category for world heritage sites which are in danger. So each year they, they meet around June, July, and they have their annual meeting. And then they, they decide whether a site is under danger from various reasons. And here we can see the global map of the uh, about 50, 60 world heritage sites which are in the danger list. And we can see when did they join the danger list. And the countries are covered by the number of world heritage sites that they have. So we can see that uh, this distribution is not random, okay? So there are areas in the world where there are more sites in danger. Now, um, why are these sites in danger? So, um, 
we went over the reasons for why they were included. And we can see that some, uh, well, there are various reasons, but some reasons are more, are more prevalent. For example, uh, development, you know, if a city is being developed, it threatens maybe the historical character of a urban region, poor management, and also armed conflicts. Especially since 2000, 2010, many sites have been added to the list in danger because of armed conflicts. And when we map these, these reasons globally, you can see, again, it's not random. For example, uh, poaching is mostly in tropical countries, but armed conflicts, it's mostly in Africa and the Middle East. So these are the countries where uh, World Heritage Sites were added to the list in danger because of armed conflicts. And so uh, we focused, so we chose to focus on the uh, Arab world, and this is a map from The Economist showing uh, the state of uh, Arab countries, the, the country status, you know, democracy, autocracy, etc. Uh, as of 2016, okay, following the Arab Spring, which didn't bring uh, the promise which was hoped of in the Western world, only Tunisia became uh, a democracy. And uh, within the UNESCO uh, website, there is uh, the UNESCO news. So you can read all the news that they publish about the World Heritage Sites and what goes on with them. And you can see, what, for example, uh, you can see a news item. Uh, so uh, the UNESCO Director General condemned destruction of the Teta Pilon and severe damage to the theater in Palmyra, okay, in Syria, for example. So uh, we went over all these uh, UNESCO news for uh, Arab World Heritage Sites and classified them whether they, you see, so here, X axis is time, Y axis are countries, and the colors say whether these are negative news, positive news, etc. And we can see that since the uh, outbreak of the Arab Spring, there, there are many more negative news and also sites added to the list in danger, and mostly in uh, several countries such as uh, Yemen, Syria, and, uh, yeah. and Iraq, Libya also. So these are what we see. The question is, can we um, uh, predict or foretell before this happens that a site is in danger? That's the question. So um, this map shows you all, all the points are World Heritage Sites. So the yellow ones are not in danger. Those in the red were defined as being in danger before the, before the Arab Spring. Those in this uh, brown uh, pentagon were defined as being in danger after the Arab Spring. The administrative regions are colored uh, based on the trend in terrorist events. So if there were more terrorist events uh, after the Arab Spring, the, the administrative regions are shown in red, okay? Red, red colors. So we can see visually that there is some correspondence between terrorist events and sites being defined as being in danger. Um, looking at the, all the, I think, 80, roughly 80 World Heritage Sites in the Arab world, splitting them into two, two classes, uh, in danger since 2010 and the others, we quantified the average values of several uh, metrics, for example, night lights. Okay? How much light is there on average from sites uh, which have been defined as being in danger and other sites? And you can see that the sites which have been defined as being in danger have experienced a decrease in night lights, meaning uh, destruction, Whereas the, in the other sites, you, uh, you can see an increase in nightlights, which means that uh, they're doing well, so the economy is doing better, so there's more light. We can see also a difference in the number of news items from the GDL project about five events. So these are the sites in danger, so the average value of five events in the site, sites in danger, and the average value of five events in the other uh, World Heritage sites. So again, a clear difference. And the same kind of difference using the GTD database on te terrorism events. So we can differentiate between these sites. There is, we, ha we have good proxies. Um, this, uh, these scatter plots now show all our world heritage sites, uh, colored by country. If they are uh, circled, if they are a circle around them, uh, it means that they are in danger. And we can see a correspondence between the temporal trends in GDL fight events, so increase in fight events, increase in terrorism events, and we can see that these sites are likely to be to be in danger. 
uh, in comparison to the other sites. Not all sites are engaged because of uh, terrorism or because of armed conflicts. Okay, there are additional reasons. Um, how much time do I have? You have uh, four minutes. Four minutes. Um, with uh, flicker photos and night lights, we don't have such a good correspondence between them. So not everything is very easy to explain. Um, here I'm just showing two two, two road trip sites, the ancient city of Aleppo in Syria and the site of Palmyra, again in Syria. These photos are from the internet. They are showing the uh, before and after okay, of the site. So you can see, these are all from Palmyra, so you can see, you can visually see the, the destruction of the site. Now where is, and, 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 and these, these two charts show us three variables, so night lights from satellites, G dot fight events, so these are news items from the internet, uh, GTD events, terrorism events from the official database. The black line shows when was the site defined as being in danger, which is all, which only happens during those annual meetings of the IUCN. So we can see that, for example, for the city of Aleppo, okay, it was defined as being in danger long after okay, fighting events have started. So they could have uh, defined it as being in danger or tried to do something before, uh, um, just when, 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 when uh, fighting they started. However, even if a site is being declared as being in danger, it doesn't mean that something that that we can save it. Okay, it will um, for the international community to decide that it, what it goes to intervene in another country. That's a big decision for a country to, say, to decide. Okay, I'm now going to, to send my my troops to protect an archaeological site in the other side, <laughs> other corner of the world. So that's a big challenge. So even if we, we know that it is in danger, what, what do we do? But at least there is, we can define that there is some danger. So um, the conclusion, uh, the combination of remote sensing and big data can offer us an approach to provide some warning of risk to a world heritage site from certain threats before, uh, before actual damage takes place. And maybe the in danger list should not be updated on an annual basis, but but when things happen, okay? So uh, thanks for your attention. These are photos of some World Heritage Sites uh, in Israel. It just for uh, nice uh, visuals. Okay, that's it. So, do you have a question? Yeah, there's a minute for the question. Okay, so one question. Oh. I'm interested in the temporal sequence. Uh, I've worked at IUCN, so I know that it's only after the damage is done that it's classified as, in effect, damage rather than at risk. Could you go back to uh, some remote sensing imagery to see whether destruction occurs before the night lights dim? Now, what, what, what is really the uh, trailing indicator and what is in advance that will give advance warning? Um. In Palmyra, we can see a decrease in night lights, some decrease before it was defined as being danger, in danger, but much more after. Yeah, that's, that's with reference to yeah. the designation as in danger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about the actual destruction. Okay. Do you have, for example, dates with the photographic um, yeah, yeah. feedback? So, I didn't ask the question. Sorry. Would the photographs give you even more advanced warning than uh, like the Like these photos? Yes. Yeah. Um, um, I guess that uh, once an area is under in, 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 uh, at war state, people, I mean, it's not like my assumption, that's, people are not coming to visit, so you will not have many fo ground photos. So this sort of information uh, stops. And uh, we showed also with the Flickr photo, we have a decrease in Flickr photos in those sites. And then you can also look, look, examine the destruction with uh, very high resolution satellites. Like uh, Planet plan Labs now offer daily global coverage at three meters. Um, so there are options. Okay.